Good morning and welcome to Augustine United Church. I hope you had a lovely Christmas day yesterday and that this is looking like a good Boxing Day. Welcome to everybody. We're all worshipping online this morning. Some and so we continue our worship in this, the season of Christmas, and we join together in our call to worship as it appears on the screen. The Lord of heaven is wrapped in cloth. The wisdom of ages needs our care. The hope of the world depends on our love. God is with us, Emmanuel. God is indeed with us, Emmanuel. And so we join together to sing our first Christmas carol today, The First Noel. together in our opening prayer and for our opening prayer we use a movement to focus our bodies and our minds throughout this season of Christmas as with Advent we are using uh, movements in British sign language and so Josh in a moment is going to show us the movements God is with us Emmanuel and we'll use that throughout the prayer so we'll hear from Josh who will lead us and then join together in prayer God with us Emmanuel, God with us, Emmanuel. By day and by night, God is with us, Emmanuel. 
in our strength and fragility. God is with us, Emmanuel. In our hope and fear, God is with us, Emmanuel. Loving God, in this season of Christmas, we celebrate you are with us. Emmanuel, God amongst us, born into poverty, dependent on fragile care, living a way of peace in a violent world. As a candle in darkness, may Jesus' poverty reveal to us true wealth. As a candle in darkness, may Jesus' vulnerability reveal to us true strength. As a candle in darkness, may Jesus' way reveal to us true wisdom. This season and in all seasons, open our minds to see ourselves, each other and this good earth in Jesus' light. Open our hearts to strip away our delusions, prejudices and fears. Open our lives to live with honesty, humility and love. We offer ourselves and our worship into the transforming light of Emmanuel as we unite our prayers together using the Lord's Prayer or Jesus' Prayer in the form of words on the screen which are most worshipful for us. Source of life, Father and Mother of all, creation honours you. May your realm of justice and love sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, Feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and for ever. Amen. And as we continue to worship in the season of Christmas, as we work, continue to worship in the season of Christmas, we light our Advent candles. All five. Christmas Day is often the big day that we think about within the season of Christmas, and yet the season of Christmas is in fact a 12-day season. Hence the 12 tribes and the song, the 12 days of Christmas. It is no longer Christmas Day, but we are in that season. For people like us who live in the north part of the world, where it gets dark and cold through the winter, the 12-day season can be a time when people meet with friends and family, keeping warm and helping us to get through the dark and the cold. When it is dark and cold, we really appreciate warmth and light. And many times, it's only when it's very dark that we notice how brilliant and how wonderful light and warmth are. In this season of Christmas, it is a time for us to appreciate the hope and the comfort, the faith, the love, the peace that Jesus offers into our lives and world. And we see that most starkly as light in dark times. And so we're going to sing to continue to celebrate this season of Christmas with Mary Had a Baby. Mary had a baby, yes, Lord. Mary had a baby, yes, my Lord. Mary had a baby, yes, Lord. The people came to worship him in Bethlehem. What did she call him, yes, Lord? What did she call him, yes, my Lord? What did she call him, yes, Lord? The people came to worship him in Bethlehem. She called him Jesus, yes, Lord. She called him Jesus, yes, my Lord. She called him Jesus, yes, Lord. The people came to worship him in Bethlehem. Where did she lay him, yes, Lord? Where did she lay him, yes, my Lord? Where did she lay him, yes, Lord? 
the people came to worship in Bethlehem. She laid him in a manger, yes, Lord. She laid him in a manger, yes, my Lord. She laid him in a manger, yes, Lord. The people came to worship in Bethlehem. And now Donna is going to share our reading today from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. Thank you, Donna. The reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace amongst those who he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. And Lawrence is going to preach to reflect on that word and share a word with us today on this Boxing Day. Thank you, Lawrence. The best line I ever read about this story of shepherds and angels and of hurrying to Bethlehem to see what was going on was in a book of essays about Christianity and the mass media. The writer was talking about the value of the media for spreading the gospel. And he was talking back then about satellite technology and cable television. This was long before Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or Facebook, Twitter, let alone Zoom. All these methods we have for getting a message around the globe almost before we finished thinking it. All these ways God has of getting God's message around the globe, communicating a vision of equal sharing, generous living and selfless caring. But despite these technologically remarkable, super quick, profit making means of communication, this writer said, and I seem to remember he was talking about the angels, though even they are a kind of satellite technology winging around the heavens. Despite all these things, though, he said, if you love someone, 
and you really want to tell them you love them, you'll do it in person. Which we have to acknowledge may be a hard or at the very least a poignant message to hear on the back of two years when personal contact has simply not been possible for very many of us for much of the time. It has hurt. Perhaps, however, for that very reason, it may be helpful for us to remember that this is the heart of God's self-giving nativity. What God offers in Bethlehem and to the shepherds in particular is the personal touch. Angels first, then a baby. This is God telling us God loves us in person. Luke's nativity story, unlike Matthew's, doesn't feature palaces and kings and wealthy long distance travellers. In Luke, we can hear intimate conversations, the angels entering like so many airborne carol singers, the shepherds discussing with each other, what are they going to do? And the conversations we can't hear, we can imagine. Joseph, it's too crowded in the inn. The baby's coming, we need some privacy. Let's go in with the animals. It's warm there and quieter. Or the angels returning to heaven, job done, and themselves full of wonder. How silently, says one, how silently the wondrous gift is given. And his winged friend nods sagely. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. Because if you want to tell someone you love them, you'll do it in person. I'm reminded of the little girl who loved her planet so much. She sat in front of the Swedish parliament for weeks on end with a placard that told us so. I'm reminded of the former moderator of the URC Youth Assembly, who watched the scenes at Kabul airport earlier this year and decided to volunteer for the refugee charity Care for Calais, to be there, as it were, in person. And of our own members who are present at the Grass Market Community Project, offering practical support, but also expressing something of Christian love. But not only that, what Luke also reminds us is that if we really want to know someone, we'll get to know them in person, which is precisely what he helps us do. And in the verses we heard, it is the shepherds in particular we get to know better. The shepherds who so often have been cast as the outcasts and often comic ones at that, drunk and garrulous in medieval plays. We often think of them as the poor and the smelly and the why would God go to them first members of society. Yet for the Jewish people, when they thought of shepherds, would they not think of Abraham, who had so much livestock he and his nephew Lot couldn't share the same land? Or of Moses, who before he got his big break worked as a shepherd for his father-in-law? Or of King David himself, the shepherd boy who used his sling and pebbles to slay Goliath. Or indeed, might, I, might they not think of Yahweh, who the psalmist writes, is my shepherd, I will not want. Let us not take the shepherds at face value. The angels don't come to them simply to make a point about God being present for the poor and excluded, though that may have been part of it, but also perhaps because shepherds were representative of God's people. And as such, they had no hesitation in sharing the good news they'd heard. All who heard were astonished at what the shepherds said. Not astonished because the shepherds were in town, or that it would be shepherds of all people sharing these stories, but astonished by what they were saying, which was what the angels had told them 
in person. If you want to tell someone you love them, you'll want to do it in person. If you want to get to know someone properly for who they really are, you'll need to do it in person. If you want to share good news, the vision of God, then you can start, the gospel writer says, by doing it in person. Of course, it's a question. What in person will look like for us in 2022? And let us say that for the good of our mental health, it may very well be in Zoom person or in Facebook person, as it has been these past two years. For these can be lifelines. But whatever our communication looks like, with one another, our families, our wider communities, let's hold on to the way God did it once in Palestine. Let us be open to the openness we find in the motherhood of Mary and the openness too of the shepherds for all their terror. Nevertheless, these folk of the hill and field were attuned to unexpected possibilities of there being more in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophies, a phrase I doubt the shepherds ever articulated. But maybe because they lived in the open and were not penned in by walls or by whatever passed as technology in those days, they knew something of the poorest boundaries between heaven and earth, across which the angels passed and entered into conversation with God's surprising to us representatives. There's more to the Christmas story than meets the eye, as Mary well knew. Perhaps because that's the nature of God's love. It touches us personally and at the same time reaches out further, for longer and more deeply than we can ever imagine. Thank you, Lawrence, for that word and reflection. And now we have some time of quiet meditation led with music by Hannah. Thank you, Hannah.
And now we join together in our prayers of the people and Kathleen is going to lead us in prayer at this time. Thank you, Kathleen. Can you respond to the words, thank you for your love shown to us, Lord, with help us be loving too. On this day, after our celebration of Christ's birth, Christmas Day itself, we remember that the shepherds were told after his birth and came to see the baby then. They were the ones who told everyone present what the angel Gabriel sent by God had sent to them, the joyous good news that this baby was the long-awaited Messiah. And so let us pray together. In times when we share many memories and often mixed emotions of Christmas's past, we celebrate the great gift to us of your Son, Lord God. While some are surrounded by relatives, friends, copious amounts of food and presents, we know that there are many others, lonely people and those less fortunate, who do not have such bounty of company or means of celebration. Yet we know in our hearts the truth that the only gift that really matters is that you, Lord God, came to earth in Jesus, becoming part of the human family, starting life like each of us, a baby in a crib. Help us recognise this amazing gift. Give us grace to receive it and be changed by the ordinariness and mysterious extraordinariness of it. Thank you for your love shown to us, Lord. Help us be loving too. In that spirit of thankfulness, help us share our love with others in our human family. You have shown us through Jesus Christ that our family doesn't just consist of our nearest and dearest, but extends to those around the world. We know that our attitudes and actions can affect others, those in our own homes or places of work, as well as those in other nations and those coming to the shores of our country as migrants and refugees. We know that there are times when we can be sorely tried by members of our own family, and we can be the difficult ones for them to have to live with. Help us recognise and deal with these foibles or difficulties and look to be more caring and accepting of those we encounter both near and far. Help us, O oh Lord, to be loving and caring, mindful of the feelings of others, their difficulties and experiences and their cultures and traditions. Thank you for your love shown to us, Lord. Help us be loving too. In hearing the story of the shepherd's visit to the baby, we realise that these unsung country workers were the ones relaying the good news from heaven to those on earth, not the wealthy and important dignitaries or ones in authority at the time. Help us listen to the voices of all sorts of people, those who are struggling with problems and those, like scientists, trying to solve them. Help us not just consider the shrill pontificating of political and consumerist leaders, or the enticing voices of celebrities and influencers. Let us recognise those real people everywhere, often dismissed as unimportant or at the margins of society, who can often reveal real truths to us about what God requires, caring, loving, persevering, forgiving. Thank you for your love shown to us, Lord. Help us be loving too. In hearing of a stable with loving parents and lowing cattle round about a baby, we might imagine a Christmas card scene of a less frantic, more rural, even peaceful, natural world. And yet in those times too there was much oppression and poverty, with division, war and occupation and broken lost people. As we care for the planet itself, let us learn in humility to use less, damage less, 
learning to be content with what we have. As we look to you, Lord, and to the example of Jesus, help us be caring of the earth and all its creatures, animal and human, as we try to heal our broken world. Thank you for your love shown to us, Lord. Help us be loving too. Amen. Thank you, Kathleen, for those prayers. We now take a moment in the service, as we do every week in our worship at Augustine Church, to dedicate all who we have and all who we are to the building of God's realm on earth. Each month, people support the mission and ministry of Augustine Church through financial offerings, which they give through standing orders, and anybody can support financially Augustine through the PayPal button on our website. But more than just financial giving, we also offer ourselves as people, our time and our talents, our resources and our abilities to the ministry and mission, not just of Augustine Church, but to the work of Christ in the world, seeing us transformed as individuals and as a society to be the realm, the community, the place, the earth that God yearns for us to be. We make that dedication each week by singing the doxology together and then joining in prayer. So let us join together as we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above you heavenly host. Praise his maker Christ Shall we pray together? Loving God, all that we have and all that we are are gifts of love from yourself. We give you this offering, dedicating ourselves, our time and our talents, our abilities and our resources to be led in the light of Jesus, that we may share your good news today and every day. Amen. We join together to sing our closing hymn, which is, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear.
come to the point in our services of notices, and there really are no notices today except to say that everything is closed and quiet. We hope that you have a good Hogmanay on the 31st and look forward to celebrating communion with you online and in the building next Sunday here at Augustine on January the 2nd. That is a communion service, so for those of you who are at home, please have some bread and wine or juice available if you wish to join in, and for people in the building, that will be provided. So we look forward to seeing you and welcoming you then. We share in the blessing. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, Christ and Spirit, be with us all today and every day. In the name of Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. 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 Our thanks go today to Mike for providing the music, to Kathleen for the prayers, Donna for the reading and Lawrence for the sermon and for all the people in the background who have helped produce the service today. I wish you a very good, restful, safe and peaceful Boxing Day and the rest of the season of Christmas. Thank you, Mike.